Greetings, YouTube. So today, I'm coming at you with another G.I. Joe Classified Custom Showcase. I have a couple of things I want to share with y'all today. And I know it's been a while since I made a video, so I apologize for the absence, but I've been a little bit busy uh, with, you know, real life stuff. And then also I was in the lab, you know, creating things. So I didn't really have anything of substance to give you just yet, but I do now. So here I am. All right. So first thing we're going to look at is some um, custom vipers. And they are not like regular Vipers. These are Vipers that I actually made up. Um, I had this idea to make these guys based on some parts that I had gotten from Gnome's Paint Shop, which I'll put a link in the description down below to his shop. He is awesome when it comes to supplying third-party parts. And so let me explain these guys real quick, and then we'll take a quick look at them, and I'll tell you what the recipe was for how I created them. Okay, so in my mind, um, if Cobra and Dr. Mindbender and Scrap Iron and whoever else is in there making, you know, advancements, maybe Destro as well. If you're creating, you're trying to create a better soldier, you're trying to create a more efficient soldier that follows orders, that doesn't, you know, you know, chump out or become a coward when things get bad, that will go and just die for you at any moment but will last a long time on the battlefield, you start to mess around with genetics and, you know, uh, super serums and things like that, but you also go the cybernetic route. So these are my ECHO Vipers. ECHO is an acronym that stands for Enhanced Cybernetic Hybrid Operative, ECHO. So this guy is the ECHO leader and all three of these guys actually are made from Power Rangers. <laughs> so this is, and I'll put the picture of what this guy was before I turned him into what he is now. Um, he was a Power Ranger that came in a two-pack. And he had some pretty good-looking features to him. And I knew I wanted to work him into my Cobra army. I just didn't know how. So he kind of sat on the shelf for a little while. And I finally found a way to work him in uh, these helmets and all of them have these helmets. I got those from uh, Gnome's Paint Shop and painted them up, painted them all black, then gave them the tried and true Cobra silver face, added some other paint accents that silver and that red. This particular guy has a cobra trooper vest um this is the leftover vest that i had from when i made my shockwave custom and i had cut it down the middle here and i just glued it back so now it fits on there good gave it some red accents and with these guys i tried to go with the idea that less is more i didn't want to put a whole bunch of different paint on them because they already looked pretty good and he does have a cobra trooper submachine gun so this is the Echo Leader. And then you have your regular Echo Viper. And again, this is the same helmet, same paint job. This uh, Power Ranger figure, I want to say it's Cyber Villain Blaze or something like that. I'll put a picture of that guy up here too as well. Um, but I also, and if you watch if you've been watching my channel you've probably seen this character before in my gi joe trailer that i had um operation arrowhead that had snake eyes in it he was taking down these guys because i was using them for cobra troopers or bad guys before we even got any you know substantial cobra operatives one more thing with these guys this holster is also from gnome's paint shop painted it black got a gun i forget where that gun is from but got them a little sidearm so they have a little bit more ordnance i did paint this front part black that was this regular burgundy color 
And, you know, I saw the silver on these guys, and I was like, you know what? They almost look like they're cybernetic. So that's what I went with. All right, so there's my new bad guys. Let's take a look at some new good guys. All right, so to fully, you know, be able to enjoy things like G.I. Joe or really anything, if you're talking about comic books, you're talking about cartoons, you're talking about action figures, there has to be a, a suspension or a... Um, um, yeah, suspension of dis of disbelief. Like certain characters in GI Joe completely fit um, modern, a realistic military, and they you know they you see them, you don't think anything of it. Other characters in GI Joe completely throw that on its ear, and Quick Kick is one of them. This is a guy who showed up, and it is so ridiculous because in the cartoon, and I'm not sure how he was introduced in the comic book, but in the cartoon. They literally found him because he was doing a movie shoot in the Arctic or at least close to the Arctic. And he still didn't have on no shirt and no shoes, damn a coat or anything like that. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that he goes around doing military or covert or whatever you want to call it operations looking like this. But if you. Like, if I was to make Quick Kick and give him shoes and a shirt, he wouldn't be Quick Kick anymore. So I had to go with what he wears or what he doesn't wear in his case. So I went through a couple of iterations of him. At first, I had the, and I'm going to put a picture of him up here. I had the Shang-Chi movie figure pants on him. And I was trying to, because uh, if you guys have paid attention to what I talk about a lot of times, I try to avoid painting if I can. So if there's any way that I can make a custom and not have to paint certain parts, I go with that. I try to do that as much as possible for obvious reasons. Articulation, uh, ease of use, less time to make them. There's all types of different reasons to do that. Um, but the bottom parts of his, um, his, uh, his legs here didn't come out to this you know open pants look it was more of a tapered pants look and it just didn't look right it just didn't so um and come to find out too that shang chi movie legs are pinless whereas comic book shang chi's legs are not they have pins so i had to go back to the drawing board and shout out the bullwinkle 80 on um youtube and instagram i was talking to him on instagram and we were discussing it how we would how you could go about doing it and through discussing it with him i came up with the idea of you know what let me find somebody that has black pants that are kind of you know not like skin tight spandex pants let me find somebody like that that has pins in their joints and i'll use that for the middle part use the original shang chi calf part that way the joint doesn't have to be painted because this was all red if you're looking at the comic book shang chi so i was able to find some pants from the um marvel legends uh baron mordo and he had the discs and the pins here that were black so this part is baron mordo the knee is baron mordo the pins are baron mordo and then this bottom part is comic book shang chi and of course the feet are as well and it worked out beautifully and i did have to paint the top part too uh, as far as his sash goes that was another issue um i had a cloth goods sash on him at first it looked good but i was trying to figure out how i was gonna fit the stars in there and make it look believable um then i found a old belt and i was able to use that and that looked a lot better but I still needed to figure out what I was going to do with the stars. So I put another strap going over the stars. I glued the stars to the, to the original strap and then take that, that thin one to keep them on. It's not exactly how he looked in the vintage line. But again, these are classified figures. So a little bit of alteration, I believe, is okay as long as it sticks to the spirit of the character. And then I took some faux leather to make his wrist straps and then this 
item here is something I picked up from some random figure I had bought and it had like a um, cloth goods strap where you could put a sword in there and the sword is from articulated icons so there's quick kick and I think he looks pretty good um, I wasn't all the way happy with him until I was able to get this look with the feet and now that I have it I'm pretty good with him. so let's look at the next guy all right, so for our last ridiculous character we have today, we have none other than the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Crocmaster. So, full disclosure, I didn't even know Crocmaster existed until probably like a year ago. Um, I had stopped watching G.I. Joe, stopped collecting G.I. Joe. I didn't really read the comics when I was younger. I was more of a cartoon person at that time. So I didn't even know he existed. I really didn't. And then I saw a video on him and then I started exploring these, you know, 90s, late 80s, 90s characters that had came out that didn't make their way into either of the cartoons. And you know, and once again, shout out to G.I. Joe Berg. They featured this guy, him and Crystal Ball and um, Big Boa as the main villains in one of their their series. And it was ridiculous, but it was so fun looking at these ridiculous characters like like this dude is ridiculous. A uh, guy who trains alligators and crocodiles. Despite the fact that he's called Croc Master, he works with alligators as well. And, you know, he grew up in the bayou uh, training crocodile or alligators and working with them and wrestling them and then using them for home security of all things, like a watchdog. Like he had some weird business where he was trying to do that. And he's now working for Cobra as their alligator trainer and they have him stationed and in cobra island so that he can train all the crocodiles and alligators that he brings there so they can provide security in the rivers and creeks and marshes and bogs and swamps of cobra island that's his job so he's ridiculous but he's also awesome at the same time if that makes any sense so let me talk about how I made him. Um, I took a lot of time and I got kind of lucky with him. There were some pieces, parts that I wanted to use for him that didn't work. And then I found something else that worked better and it came out very, very good. So first of all, I'll put a picture of the original Croc Master here. And then I will also put a picture of, and I don't know which one I'm going to find here. It's probably either 25th anniversary or 50th anniversary, modern type, smaller figs. I'll put that picture up here as well. So you kind of have an idea of who we are looking at, um, what, what I was trying to go for. So uh, first, let's talk about his pets. So he has um, a, I believe this one is the alley. Yeah, the green one is the alligator. As far as I know, Alligators have a more triangular head. Whoops, sorry about that, Croc Master. Please don't sick your beasts on me. Um, it has alligators have a more triangular head, and crocodiles have a more squared off head. I could be completely wrong, but that's I want to say that's what I read. Um, so I got these crocodiles, these alligator type things. And they actually look really good, to be honest. Like, the paintwork and stuff on these are great. They're not articulated or anything, except for the jaw. The jaw does open up. That's good. Um, the legs don't move or anything. But I got those at a hobby store, about seven or eight bucks a piece. I also got the chain for them from a hobby store. I did do a little bit of custom work to the chain. I painted it. A little bit rusty because it was like very very clean and silver looking so i needed to make it look like it had you know been in the swamps for a long time uh so let's look at croc master himself so this is the crossbones comic book body just came out a few months ago maybe uh six months ago or so 
Um, I, I picked that body uh, because, again, I want to pick bodies that I don't have to do as much painting, you know, as, as I can. I want to I want to avoid having to paint joint, definitely painting joints. But I want to avoid painting as much as I can, especially on parts that are already there or moving parts. Um, I'd love for those parts to be already the color or near the color that I need so that there, if there is any paint rub, it doesn't hurt the figure. Um, so this is that crossbones body. The boots, I molded some nodules or some kind of like round kind of things just to put on here kind of to simulate the crocodile boots that the original figures had. And to add some texture to it, I put some sand on them and then just washed over it with the Mod Podge so that it would dry hard so the sand will stay there to give it some texture. Dry brushed it with a couple of different color greens and just, you know, kind of made it up as I went. This, there isn't a real formula for this. You kind of just do it until it looks right. Gave him a knife sheath. The original figure, I want to say, had a knife on his boot, but I didn't want to put it on the boot. So I put it on his thigh here. This is a Marvel Legends. I think this came from like Nuke or something. Knife and sheath. This is a crossbones uh, pistol. And I put a little loop here to, so he could have it on his back. Uh, the crocodile shirt slash armor. This is from the Build-A-Figure... Cull Obsidian, the big guy from the Dark Order or the, shoot, I can't remember the name of him, Th Thanos' people. And I basically, it, come to find out, his, his chest was a rubber overlay, so you could cut it off, and it was already shaped to fit on this kind of, you know, shaped body, a muscular body, so it was very easy to cut it to fit onto him. Then I found some random straps just to make it like it's strapped onto them. So you got the front from Call Obsidian and also the back glued it in. This is Crossbones original head. I just painted it all black, painted the eyes red. Found some different knickknacks to do his uh, rebreather. This is a wire from uh, headphones. Another random piece added it into there and then the original figure kind of just had this hose going here and then not going anywhere else, which was kind of weird. So I went ahead and added some more hose. Then this backpack thing to make it like it's this is how he breathes when he's underwater laying in the swamps. And then the belt. Oh, this part here was also from Call Obsidian. The belt is from M'Baku. His little skirt piece, I cut that and then sculpted this little eye, painted it, put some Mod Podge to it, gave it a, a dose of the nail polish so it's nice and shiny. This you probably recognize from Gung Ho. And that's about it. So even though he may look like he's slightly complicated, he actually was one of my easier customs. It just was a matter of having the stuff to do him with. So. All right, let's wrap this up. One more thing I forgot to mention. I did make Crocmaster a whip because he does have a whip in the original figure. So this is just some, you know, strings and uh, leather straps braided up, made into a whip. And he can hold this. Um, I'll take some pictures of him holding it later and put them at the end of the video. So, uh, as far as these customs go, um, like I said, the, the Echo Vipers, I had been thinking about that idea for a long time and I was just waiting to try to see how I could do it. The Quick Kick, there's, you can go online right now. There's a ton of people that have made Quick Kick. Um, People, as soon as that Shang-Chi comic book body came out, people were thinking about Quick Kick. So that's nothing really special. Um, but I just wanted to show it just because. Um, Croc Master, he is slightly special. I will say that. Um, that one I'm really proud of. I put a lot of thought, a lot of imagination into it. 
especially for a character that didn't see a whole lot of limelight. Like he, I, I he got popular or or famous with me because of somebody's play motion. Like before that, I wasn't thinking about no Croc Master. So, um, it just goes to show you that there's there's so many characters that you could get into that you could create, you know, customs of that. I mean, I'll be shocked, shocked if Hasbro makes a Croc Master. They've made some, you know, uh, unexpected choices as far as the classified line goes. Um, but I don't see them making a Croc Master anytime soon. Quick Kick, maybe. Croc Master, I don't see that happening. I just don't. I'll be shocked if that happens. So it is what it is. Uh, I got more stuff coming. I do have a vehicle that I created or that I uh, retrofitted. I'll make a video about that coming up soon. And I also have a new rabbit hole that I have fallen down. Oh, no. So we got to talk about that, too. So like, comment, subscribe. Later.